Hello, and welcome to Hampson Russell's new version of software. In this video, we're going to go over the new interface, particularly items of how to maneuver, how to get around, where does your data get loaded, things like that. The first thing you're going to notice looking at the screen here is that there's these tabs. The new version of software is tab driven, meaning things are now organized under different tabs instead of buttons as they were in previous versions. To start off, when you open your software, the first thing you're going to see here is this window with the projects and setting tabs. Under the project tab, you're going to see any and all projects you have previously used. They'd all be listed out here. If you wanted to select one, you just double click on it or you'd just use your open session. But before we go there, I want to talk about the other tab. There's a settings tab. If we click here, the settings tab is where you will find all of your personal user controls. You have control over the default path, as you always have in Hampson Russell. You have control of the appearance. So depending on what platform you're on, you'll have different options here, but you can def you can control the look of the software. You also have control over window behaviors, which is really nice. You can set things for scroll bars to be on and off, if you want pop-ups to come in, different settings. There's a number of items right here that you can set as defaults under your personal user ID. Seismic display. This is very nice. You can set the default for the time windows and axes and other things like that. Wiggles on, wiggles off. You're, this is for you personally, how you like the defaults of your windows to be seen. Process behaviors. Processes in Hampson Russell are things like stacks, AVO attributes, inversions, all those things you run. Uh, the more control you have over them. You can now set different input prefixes names, you can underscore stuff, you can choose things to be threaded, single threaded or multi threaded. Uh, there's a number of issues down here, how to control the world database, a number of items which you can read through later. They give you personal control. Workflow behaviors. Workflows are new to um, the software and what it is is we've taken instead of all of the normal processes you would have had to do something like gather conditioning. In prior versions you would have had to have known where every single step of the tool for data conditioning would be, what order to put them in, things like that. We've bundled them for you. We've bundled them into a workflow and which we'll, we'll go over in a different movie later but I'll touch bases on it here. Um, the workflows are very nice because we've bundled everything for you so you just start at the top, you work your way to the bottom and you have a finished product when you're done. So under the settings tab, this is your personal user controls. If we go to the back to the project tab, again this would list out all of my existing projects and to get started I'm just going to double click and the software is going to open. What you're seeing here is the new interface. Over here on the left I like to call this my toolbox. It's under the project manager this is my toolbox and this over here displaying the seismic is my work area. The reason I describe them these way, this way is to give the user a sense of control of where things are happening. What's really nice over here under the project manager we have these four tabs. The project tab lists out a whole bunch of different types of data. We have well data, seismic data, horizon. If I click on the well data as you can see it can see all my well logs. If I click on seismic of seismic data, horizon, so forth. This is where the data you're looking for you'll find. That's why this is a toolbox. Also, if you're wanting to load data, you just go to the tab you're interested in, be it seismic, horizon, or well. At the bottom, you choose import well, and you import your data. Likewise, seismic, seismic, import data, horizon, import file. They all work the same. So the project tab gives you a data tree of all the data loaded in your project, plus that's where you load your data in. The processes tab. This is the tab that you most likely will feel the most comfortable with at f first, because this is a listing of all the tools we had in, old, in other versions of software. For instance, if you're looking for how to do a check shot correction, you go to log processes, check shot correction. If you're looking for how to do different slices, here's create a slice, single data slice. If you're wanting to make a model, 
you come to stratum model, build model, these are all the tools you're used to seeing in other versions of Hampson Russell. But what's really nice is let's say I don't know where this is. I don't I'm looking for a radon. Radon filter. And I can't find it in listing, so at any point under filter, I just type what I'm looking for. And there it found my radon tool. So this filter is very nice, and you'll notice the filter does appear under a number of different op tab options here. Workflows. I mentioned workflows just a moment ago. Here's a listing of our pre-made default workflows. We've got AVO modeling, at AVO attributes, pre and post stack inversions, and um, conditioning data. If I open one of these, like conditioning data, you can see the very first thing you would do if you were a user who needed to condition their gathers, you would start with this recommended workflow. You'd start with your band pass, then you'd mute things, and you'd work all your way to trim statics, and then your data would be um, ready for conditioning, ready for work. Likewise, we have pre-stack inversion. If you're going to do that, you're going to select your seismic, you're going to create a model, you're going to make some angle gathers, you're going to work your all the way through to actually applying the volume, which means actually getting your inversion results. The really nice thing about these workflows are these are just our default workflows. These are what you start with. Something like data conditioning, people are going to be very particular on what they like to do and how they like to do stuff. So a nice thing here is if you just right mouse button click, I can expand all of these or I can insert a row above, below, remove. And when I do that, if you look over here, these are every single tool in Hampson Russell from the processes tab, which is right here. So what you can do is you can come in here, you can insert processes above and below and save out a workflow as your personal workflow. It can be Bob's data conditioning. Uh, it's your particular one that you like, you can change parameters, you have control over that. So you can make your own personal workflows and you can utilize our pre-made workflows. The last tab over here in our toolbox is our scenes. And what scenes are is they're set to turn on and as you run different processes over here in the work area, these scenes are going to jump in here and they're little JPEG images of um, where you've been last and they're also interactive so you can just choose one and your screen to the right will automatically update. So again this is what I refer to as your toolbox because this is where under the project tab you're going to find all of your data, it's where you're going to load your data, it's where you're going to find your processes, and where you're going to use existing workflows or make your own workflows. So that's why it's the toolbox. With that said, over here to the right, this is our work area. This is where you're actually going to run the processes. So just to familiarize yourself, we've got a nice gathers here. We've got our eyeball icon. It pops up. Though the font looks different, this is very similar to our other versions of software. Um, here I'm displaying my gathers. I want incident angle to be displayed. The velocity control pops up. I'm going to use my single well. I'm going to use my correlated one. Though the windows look different, you can see quickly that the concept is the same that you should be used to from other versions of Hampson Russell. I choose OK and OK. The process runs and it'll show me my incident angle, which is very nice. I can come in here, you turn stuff off, say none, you say OK, it updates. Zoom in, zoom out as you're used to. A really nice tool here is if I just slide over, you can have multiple wells uh, displayed in your seismic. You just choose this little well icon, you pull it out here, you click it, and it'll automatically pop to the well you're interested in, which is pretty cool. And base map, base map's where it's always been, it's under view base map. Now this is a teeny little 2D line, so it's not a very exciting base map, but all the same. And it has the same parameters you're used to seeing um, from our older versions of software, if you look in here. So up here we have tabs. We had tabs, of course, over here in our toolbox, but in our work area we have tabs across the top. What you do here is Seismic, of course, shows you, obviously, all of your seismic data. Your data explorer this is the same data explorer you're used to seeing. It's just in a little bit more laid out view. This is showing me all my wells. I hit my blue arrow. It's 
going to show me a listing of all my logs. There's my well location. There's a whole bunch of other icons over here for zooming in and zooming out. So you've got your base map and your well all in one screen. And if I want to look at the actual data values of a log, I just choose it. There they are, just as they've always been. If I come up here, another option, we can see the data explorer for our horizons, our velocity models, culture, faults, seismic, which we're very used to seeing. Here's my geometry. I only have one listed currently in this data set, but you would have seen a number of seismic volumes here. So there's your data explorer. That helps you get around. There's your seismic window. I'm clicking the tabs at the top of the screen if you're getting lost. There I am. And this is how we maneuver. If I go to wells, you're going to see all of your well information. It's very interactive. Stuff is just right here, easy to get to. Under the wells tab, just as in prior versions, you've got your eyeball, eyeball icon. The font looks different, the layout's a little different, but the concept's the same. Here's my active logs. You can list out everything if you have more than one. You can choose and flip as you've always been able to. Here's your curve display, so you can set your default sizes and your colors, scales and details, synthetics, seismic volumes. It's all here as you're used to. The difference is how interactive it is. For one, if I'm just doing this and all of a sudden I say, hmm, I really want to see my gathers, I just grab my gathers, come over here, drop them in, and there they are, right away. Likewise, on my seismic, I'm right here, you can drag and drop seismic. This drag and drop option is available everywhere in the software, which makes it really nice. So let's run a process. I've gone, I've gone back to my seismic tab, come over here, and I just want to simply for um, display reasons, uh, do a stack. So I'm just going to type stack over here under process, oops, process tab, I'm going to type stack. There it is, here's my different options. I'm going to do a CDP stack. Over here in my toolbox on the left, I just double click and the parameters pop in. My input volume is my gathers, my output is my CDP stack. For this experiment, I'm going to run the process over the whole data range, but if you have a larger data set, you might want to do this on a smaller scale. So you can always say show advanced options under any process. If it's a gather or an inversion or a band pass, all windows have advanced options. You can come in here and you can set all of these individually if you wish, but for a simple stack, this will do. I'm going to say OK. And process runs, and in a moment it's going to pop up my input and my output in two different windows. This is a really nice feature for the new version. So here are my gathers on the left that I started with, and here's my stack right here on the right. And you'll notice down here, we have we have views. See this little eyeball icon in the bottom right? We have eyeball 1, eyeball 2, and eyeball 3. You can have a max of three data sets displayed in the window. They can be vertical or horizontal, which is very nice. So I have eyeball 1, this is over here. Eyeball 2 is over here. If I go to my eyeball up here to display them, you'll see there's you can set the colors and the seismic displays for volumes 1, 2, or 3. You just choose which one. You tell it what you want to see, and it updates the data for there. So in summary, the new version of software I think is very intuitive. Uh, users have been telling us that they find it very easy to use. They love the tab-driven option. Uh, again, over here on the left, this under the project manager is your toolbox. This is where you'll find all of your loaded data. This is also where you will load your data. The Processes tab has all of the tools Hampson Russell has always had. It's in a data tree format. If you can't find it, you can just type it in and it'll find it for you in the tree. Workflows has predefined workflows, which are very nice, and you can edit your own. And then scenes you'll find useful as they grow. You can use them for different PowerPoints or finding where you were last. They're, they're proving to be very useful. Over on the right, this is your work area. Again, tab driven very similar in its nature to um, our previous versions, as in you can go to the eyeball icon and choose things, display stuff. It's really turning out to be a good version of software. We're getting lots of users who like the interface, 
and I look forward to hearing your comments, and I hope you enjoy the new version of Hampson Russell. Thank you.